I think it's quite amazing in the first place to be living every violinist's dream here. Um, everybody's been telling me how they've come to Genova in their uh, travels and stood in front of that glass case and stared at this um, instrument, the most legendary violin in history, Paganini's instrument, Il Cannone, the Canon, from 1743, a Guarneri del Gesù. Um, so this violin is really uh, unique and um, Paganini brought it with him all over Europe. It's the sound that inspired Schumann, that inspired Schubert, that inspired Chopin, Goethe, Rossini. And um, when I had the chance to play this violin in concert at the Teatro Carlo Felice here in Genova, and we discussed the possibility of actually recording on it, I really couldn't believe um, it was going to happen, but here we are. Um, I thought a lot about the program too, and as this violin has been played throughout its history, post Paganini history that is, um, mostly to celebrate Paganini, but mostly playing his own music, um, I wanted to do something slightly different. So in this CD I'm playing um, a series of pieces, lots of great music, but they're all homages to Paganini, so you have everything from Schnittke's a Paganini to Szymanowski's Caprices to Corigliano's Red Violin Caprices um, and even a new commission by Carlo Boccadoro dedicated to Paganini where you can hear his little spirit um, coming out of the violin and uh, some quotes from his music so I think it's really something different in fact uh, we were talking with a curator about this. We don't think this instrument has ever played anything uh, from the second half of the 20th century because, of course, um, it was given to the city of Genova by Paganini um, after his death. And so he was the last continuous proprietor. Um, fun fact, the violin used to be played at the prize-giving ceremony of the Paganini competition by the winner for five minutes. and. It's quite interesting how all the winners used to say it was a nightmare because it is a quite difficult instrument to get used to, especially if you've never played it and they hand it over to you just for those few minutes of terror. Um, but when I was a child growing up, I kind of really wanted to win Paganini competition, not for glory or monies, but basically just for those five minutes to get to put my hands on this instrument which again I'd seen a few times through the glass and I cried so much when I took it the first time because I've always said um, for a violinist his, his or her instrument is his voice and so you get to tear out a little piece of soul of previous players. There is something, it's almost like you're stealing something that is very private. And you do feel their presence and their mark on the instrument and in the way it vibrates. Um, so often, for instance, violins have had major work or restoration on them. In this case, the neck is even original. So, I mean, you know, Paganini's hands were going up and down this neck while he was composing his concerti and touring Europe and just improvising and letting everybody hear his incredible skill, leaving people stunned. Um, and so much so, it was said that he was possessed by the devil. And while preparing for this recording, actually, somebody wrote to me on Facebook saying to be very careful because the violin might have a very magical effect on me and uh, so it might possess me or something like that which I, I found um, quite funny in a way but this is that that's how much this violin has played with people's um, imagination over the centuries this is how important it is um, we've had fun in these few days with it has its own security it has its five bodyguards um, they have a code name for it, I cannot repeat, but it's quite cute. And um, it is just a whole world that I was privileged enough to penetrate.